Dear brothers and sisters, the Hoover Dam built in 1935 on the Colorado River is an engineering wonder. Hoover is what is called an arch gravity dam. It is so designed that the greater the pressure applied to the dam, the more it is wedged into the solid rock. The greater the forces against the dam, the stronger it becomes. So let it be with us. When heartaches come as they will, let us not cry out, Why has this happened to me? Why has this happened to someone I love? What have I done to deserve this? Rather, let us surrender our need to a healing God. Let us allow our heart to wedge us ever more surely into the solid rock. Brothers and sisters, this fourth Sunday of Lent, today's Gospel reading tells us of a poor man born blind who shows real wisdom that the learned Pharisees fail to match. He has no eyesight, but he has excellent insight. The vision he received includes the knowledge of God. On the other hand, the Pharisees have excellent eyesight, but no insight. They fail to see God's power working in Jesus, giving sight to a man born blind. Instead, they choose to remain blind and to harden their hearts. The blind man begins to see more and more clearly while the Pharisees become more and more blind. Eyesight and enlightenment are not the same. The healing of the man born blind gives Jesus an occasion to reveal himself as the light of the world and as the one who reveals the Father. The miracle of giving sight to the man has a double scope. It shows that Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. It also makes the healed person to cooperate with Jesus. His docility and obedience to Jesus are clear signs of his confidence in him. While many people marvel at the miracle, for the Pharisees it becomes a motive for division, opposition, and total blindness. And the one who was healed arrives step by step at the fullness of light at faith in Jesus. Though in the beginning Jesus was a stranger for him, after the miracle he is convinced that Jesus is the prophet. The threats of the Pharisees and his excommunication by them do not make him change his view on Jesus. On account of his uprightness, he is isolated. At this point, Jesus reveals to him that he is the Messiah. Thus, the man receives not only eyesight, but something much more deeper, the gift of faith. Brothers and sisters, this weekend's second reading is powerful and positive one. The light of Christ casts away all darkness and not only shows up any flaws and faults, but also shines its healing light upon our wounds. The first reading is so good 
to teach us about God and human ways. God is primarily concerned with what is within, not merely outward experiences. And that is what we see in the gospel. And God judges from the heart. He eventually runs out of brothers until Samuel finds out that the youngest and least likely one is not there. He has been overlooked. He is out looking after the sheep. He is called in and chosen by God. All of us have been given the marvelous light of Christ. Brothers and sisters, the choice is ours. To walk in the light God gives us in Jesus or to dwell in darkness of ignorance and lack of faith. Definitely, this is the clear message of what the whole world is experiencing now with the COVID-19 pandemic. We are forced to stay at home and spend more time with our loved ones. No more shopping and leisure outside and begin to give attention to the well-being of the whole family. Since public masses are suspended, we now focus on family prayer. As priests, we are obliged to celebrate private masses. His mass is more focused on God, not on how to please his parishioners. And we see and willing let go of the non-essential and focus more on what really is essential, that is God and family. COVID-19 is not a punishment sent by God. We know how it started. But God can write straight with the crooked lines. So, why not take this time of enforced social distancing to take time to reflect on life, its meaning, how I live, how I interact with others. The season of Lent invites us to close our eyes to the distractions of this world and to the countless non-essentials in our life. It challenges us to look into ourselves and examine our values and direction in life. Unlike the man born blind, may we fix our gaze on Jesus alone, our source of true happiness and life. We will not get lost, for he is the way. We will not live in darkness, for he is the truth. We will overcome death, for he is the life who offers us the gift of everlasting life. When time seems so uncertain, confusing, and dark, my dear people of God, and my dear brothers and sisters, let us always call to mind his words. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.